So a few weeks ago, I got a fantastic question from one of our followers. Lauren J wrote in, for those of us in the Northeastern US, what are the first seeds we should plant this year and when? That is a fantastic question, Lauren, and it is a universal question that we get asked a lot. Gardeners all over the country are a little confused about when to garden, especially when you're starting your garden. What seeds should you choose? It all feels kind of complicated and overwhelming. And for some people, that means they just never even start. And that is really sad for me. So today I'm gonna share with you some tips for how to choose seeds for your particular location. Because let me tell you what works in San Diego doesn't necessarily work in Seattle. And what works in Seattle isn't going to necessarily work in Chicago and so on and so forth across the country because our country is big and we have a vast diversity of climates within our country. And so for me to blanketly say, you need to sow lettuce on this particular day doesn't work. But I'm gonna tell you how to figure out when and how to figure out which varieties will work for you. So the first thing you have to consider is where are you gardening? You could be gardening in containers. You could be gardening in raised beds. Maybe you're planting into the ground itself, but you have to consider where you are gardening. Breaking a large project down into smaller projects makes the whole thing cheaper and easier. If you are gardening in containers, you're going to want to choose varieties of plants that do well in containers, and if you're choosing perennials, that will overwinter in containers. There are lots of things to consider, but the first thing you need to think about is where are you gardening? Now it's time to collect a little information for yourself. Number one, you need to know what your growing zone is. You can find that on the USDA website. This is not the end all be all, not every zone six is the same across the country. USDA growing zones are determined by an average of the coldest temperature you can expect over a winter. That's really all it means, but in the gardening industry, it is used as one of the criteria to sort plants. That means if you're in three through seven, depending on how much water and that kind of thing that particular plant needs, that plant might do well for you. Hardiness zones really are only important to when you're talking about perennials. The next piece of information you need are your first and last frost dates. So these you'll find on the NOAA website. That helps you calculate when you can plant out seeds. And if you need to plant things, start things inside before you take them outside. You can also find your average rainfall on the NOAA website. Your average rainfall helps you plan for irrigation. For example, here in Colorado on the Front Range, I can expect about 15 inches of rain a year. That means that pretty much anything I put in the ground, I'm going to need to irrigate. The last thing to think about as you're thinking about determining what to grow is what kind of garden are you doing? Are you growing vegetables, for example, so that you have food security? Maybe you really like to preserve and can, and so you want to put up lots of tomatoes, or maybe you are hoping to be able to supplement what you find at the store with some varieties that aren't commercially available. Maybe you are wanting to start a cutting garden. I want to be able to have cut flowers on my table as much as I possibly can. Maybe you're looking at a potage garden. Potage garden is one where you mix flowers and vegetables together. Maybe you're really interested in growing herbs. Perhaps you're gardening for wildlife, in which case you want flowers that are going to attract lots and lots of insects for birds to eat, for example. So there are lots of ways to garden and none of those are better or worse than the other. And of course you can do a wide range of those functions all within the same garden too. But think about why you are growing. That helps you determine what you want to grow. Now you can start to look for varieties for your particular zone. And here's where catalogs and websites are fantastic tools. For me, I still very much function on paper 
And so I tend to use a catalog and I love being able to sit and peruse and make notes and think about the different varieties that I'm interested in growing from a particular catalog. That's just kind of how my brain works. But maybe you want to pin things from a website. That's a fantastic way to start creating a list or just add items to the cart. All of the information that you need to start planning is found either on the website in the description with the seeds or it's found in the seed catalog. And of course you can use them both together. So as you are looking through your catalog and you're choosing flowers, for example, that you want to grow, you're looking for several pieces of information. First of all, if it is it an annual or is it a perennial? An annual is a plant that completes its entire life cycle in one growing season. So it germinates, it grows, it blooms, and probably sets seed all within one growing season. Now, to make things confusing, there are some perennial plants, meaning that they live for more than one growing season that are sold as annuals because in most climates they will complete an entire life cycle within a growing season even if in other climates they would be perennial. Most of the things that we grow as vegetables here in North America are annuals. Now we have to talk about when you're going to plant it. Once you have your seed order ready, and you've decided these are the varieties I'm going to sow, these are the vegetables I like to eat, these are the flowers I want to see, this is what I want to grow, then it's time to make a plan. For me, I use a printed calendar. This is the first step in my planning process. And the very first thing I do is put down my last frost date. So for me, that is May 10th. Then what you're going to end up doing is counting backwards from that last frost date. And that helps you determine when you're going to plant those seeds. So let's pick a packet and look at it. Basil. So if you take a look at the back of the seed packet, this is going to say when to sow outside and when to start inside. So for basil, it's recommended to start it inside four to six weeks before transplanting outside. And you don't wanna transplant it outside until the nighttime temperatures are above 50 degrees. So for me, I don't end up transplanting basil outside or even sometimes planting it until June. Um, but for you, that might be April, depending on where you are. So it's important to look at what the recommendations are. And in this case, the recommendation is four to six weeks before transplanting outside. Now, basil grows very nicely in a seed tray for a long time. I'm gonna start my basil about six weeks before my last frost date, but that is because I have a greenhouse and I can do that and keep it in the greenhouse until our nighttime temperatures are consistently warm. The big thing to know about vegetables is that some of them, if you're going to grow them from seed, in some climates you are going to need a season extender. And that is largely because your growing season is simply too short. That period between your last frost and your first frost is too short for that vegetable to really hit its peak. All of those different types of season extenders can help you prolong your growing season. That's why they're referred to as season extenders. It extends the season into those shoulder seasons of spring and fall so that you can protect those little tiny seedlings and get more out of them. If you live in a part of the country where you're going to need a season extender like I do, check out our video. We have a whole bunch of different ideas coming from gardeners all over the country for different types of season extenders, what they use and how they use them. It's fantastic, so to be sure to look for that. So here's my last frost date. Let's count back six weeks. One, two, oops, here's April. Three, four, five, six. 
So here I'm going to start on the first week of April, basil. So you can see I have already planned out several things. I have black eyed Susans that I'll start in March and radishes. The radishes will go outside and the poppies will go outside, but the calendula I will do inside. So I have different plans and I could mark those um, that radishes are going outside and poppies are going outside, but calendula is going inside and I can keep track of it that way. Uh, with radishes and other vegetables, you can also do what's known as successive sowing. The advantage to successive sowing, you will get radishes for weeks to come as opposed to getting all of the radishes at one time. Once you have your calendar all set out, you can organize your seed packets very easily. All you have to do is write the date that each thing should be planted up at the top and if you have multiples, clip them together or put a rubber band or paper clip or something to hold them together and then group them by date. So March 1st, March 29th, April 5th, April 12th, April 19th. I have them all together in chronological order. I'm going to stick these together in a box and they'll be ready. And then on that particular day, I just pull the seeds and away we go and get them planted super simple and easy to stay organized. If you order seeds from Botanical Interest, every seed order contains the Botanical Interest Seed Starting Guide. This is an invaluable tool with all kinds of information about how to read your seed packet, when to start things, how to start plants from seed inside, how to start them outside, all kinds of information. So remember to take a look at that when it comes with your seed order. It's easy for all of this to sound like a lot of work, but here's the thing. You can just throw a bunch of seeds on the ground and see what happens. And you will have some success that way. But if you want to be more successful, a little planning, a few simple tools will help you have more success in the garden and get you growing so much faster. If you have questions, please drop them below. I will happily answer them. And be sure to like and subscribe. Happy gardening.